Okay, let's have a chat with Art Artem Yevdem. Hello, door guard. We meet again. The huge guard noticed you and blocked the door. You again. What now? <laughs> Listen here, monkey mouth. Flex at me and your chief over there will lose a big cash in opportunity. <laughs> My name's Igor, and I have business with your boss. If something concerns the boss, it concerns me as well. What do you need? I... Old Soviet tech. <laughs> Ever heard of a Cinco Phasertron? Hmm. Be pretty cool, actually. I wonder whether he does sell old Soviet tech. Hmm. I need to get some parts, spare parts for a car. People say your boss is one of the people who can provide such rarities. The guy gives you a happy, wide grin. That's right, boss is smart. He's got his hands of pure gold, I'll tell you. He's also great with com commerce, yep. Go ahead, ask him for what you need. But act nicely, or I'll tear your arms off. So you got a shotgun. Fine, just move out the way. Actually, let's see what he's got to sell. A whole lot of nothing. And he pops the door open without even looking. I'm getting a bit of lag, actually. Just gonna change the graphics. Better. Alright, hello, Dimitri. And I clicked the wrong thing. I don't want to be looting his place. What is that? A biscuit. Hmm. Before you sits a fat bloke in a crimson suit. He's studying a ledger. From time to time, the man pouts and scratches his triple chin, all whilst making some markings in the weather-beaten book. <laughs> hey, yeah, are you Artem, yeah? Hmm. I'm gonna... Should I wait until he notices me? He looks like a no-nonsense kind of guy. I'm gonna wait until he notices me. The man continues studying his notebook, putting spit on the tips of his fingers and turning around the pages. <clears throat> Artem, yeah? I have business for you. I am. What do you need? Talk first. Time is money. They say you can get all kinds of rare gadgets. Is this true? Depends on what you'll be needing. You know how the times are. Quality tech is rare and costs a lot. So what'll it be? You know what I really need? To bleed you like a pig. <laughs> I need a carburetor and an ignition starter. Got anything to offer? Artem Yev starts looking through his notepad. Yeah, I got those. I can deliver them in a couple of days, but it will cost you a pretty penny. 7,000 rubles for the carburetor, 10,000 for the starter. Yes, that's a lot, but these days the stuff is really rare. Although there are other ways to pay, you can work for me if you don't have enough cash on you. Now, I do know that you can get these items from scavengers as well, but it's random. I'm not sure whether I should just do that, because that sounds like a lot. I mean, what do I actually have? I got 36,000 on me. I'm trying to save it in case I see anything rare. Um, I don't think any of my companions have anything else. Nope. So yeah, 36,000. I don't want to spend, like, half of that. Right. Work. What kind of work? First off, I need you to take care of a man. An independent goddamn journalist. He has some intel on me. He's hiding near Krasnoth pneumonia. You need to find him and silence him. How you do it, I don't really care. But I need the deed done. The second job is a fair bit more interesting. Close to town, there's this locked bunker. They say it was used for intercepting communications of supposed enemies of the state. There should be a gadget in this bunker called the 1C22 Decoder. You don't need to know what it does, I just need you to fetch it for me. Aha, been there done that, I think. If you complete both tasks, you'll get your parts and more. Any questions? Hope not. Now, do I want to keep the decoder? I couldn't use it in my base, it seems, and no one else has asked me about it, but I'm not sure whether I should give it to him. What's that bunker story all about? It's near Krasnos pneumonia in the mountains. There was a communications array some time ago. Intercepted enemy signals and whatnot. You need to search that place for a decoder. And do I really have to kill the journalist? Maybe you don't need to kill him. What you need to do is make him shut up for good. Buy him off. Threaten him. I don't care. Hmm. Ah, the decoder. I'm assuming it's not going to be used for anything else. I don't, I'm not going to be intercepting communications. Like, I mean, I, I am. But I can't really do anything with my radio. I don't know whether I should hold on to that for now. Hmm. Can I intercept? No. Don't agree. Goodbye. Alright, I'm just going to ask him about other stuff. Here's your footsteps and lifts up his head. What do you want? I can only do that. Wanna buy the parts? Maybe we can talk about a discount? Oh god, not that. 
<laughs> it's less than I expected. Uh, think about it yourself. Such money for parts I can buy from any scavenger. This is way too much. Artem, yeah, fights it. But finally accepts the truth of your words. Fine, fine. I'll take a 4,000, which means you get the carburetor for 3,000 and the starter for 7,000. But this is my final offer. Uh, sounds better. Let's change the topic. <laughs> Artem Yev looks annoyed. He seems to want nothing but to return to his suspicious machinations. That's that. Fine. No. Yeah, I don't know whether I want to give him the decoders the only issue. The journalists are not having any problems with it. I'm fairly sure I can just threaten him or buy him off, as he said. Uh, but the decoder, I kind of want to keep. I guess I'll have a look around for scavengers for now. It's a shame I can't seem to mention... Um, that, uh, I keep forgetting his name, that the old village head, comrade, um, you know, knew him, and I can, like, probe into that. Obviously, I'd only want to do that after I potentially bought the parts from him, but... Was this car always there? That looks really weird, just in the middle of the street. I know there have been updates to this game. Oh, yeah, I meant to say, there's been a, um, I think it was called, was it the Dead City update? Uh... Pretty much they added in the Dead City as an actual area, so you can actually go there now. I'm fairly sure. Either that or it was the... Uh, what was it? The other town of uh, Trudegrad. Yeah, I'm fairly sure it was the Dead City. Uh, and they're adding Trudegrad in another expansion, which is really, really nice. I think I know all these guys. Yeah, so I do have access to the bunker now, thanks to... Our uh, lovely politician friend who we've got in there now. So let's have a look and see whether I can actually get in there. Yeah, it was Ivan Ivanovich, wasn't it? The guard at the elevator gives you a friendly nod. Hello again. What's brought you here this time? About the bunker. The guard narrows his eyes in a cunning smile. Ivan Ivanovich, my colleague, has invited me to stay. Will you let me pass? The guard scratches his head, thinking. This is something connected to the elections in Otradna, right? Yeah, I remember. He mentioned he found a new power. Coming in. Give my regards to the old man. Boom. That's a lot less money that I had to pay. Am I allowed to just click on it? Oh yeah, there we go. I'm not too happy about old elevators. Wow, there's some new loading screens. That's actually really pretty. Okay, this place looks pretty big. I can finally get around to doing that one about the uh, the head electrician, now with the coal shipments as well. I need to go to that anyway, because I've got the, what was it, um, that one, Simon Lepushkin owns 3,000 rubles, working in the power plant. Can I just get in anyway? Hmm. I guess I could unlock it. I don't really want to do anything in there, but I guess it's worth the XP for unlocking it, right? Damn it. 13 experience. I do need wires, but I don't really want to steal them from these places. So I'll see what they've got in them. Whole lot of nothing. Right. Listen to this, it's a lot quieter than I expected. There don't seem to be too many people around. What time is it? 7.30 in the morning. Uh, I guess the politicians will be lazy like normal. And that is definitely keeping me out of their food area. Alright, I'm just going to move on for now. So a games room with a bunch of bunks. Why is this open? Nope. I wonder whether I can find the secret entrance uh, to the underground sewer bit here. That should be pretty useful. Just gonna actually save, seeing as I'm breaking into all these things. It's not much in there. Not much I want to take as well. Right. Ooh, a library. Now that is something interesting. 
Well, that picture changed, actually. I can't seem to interact with the real. Can we get in there? Yeah. Let's save. Oh, yeah. What is that? I like the way I don't get in the way of the uh, picture. Oh, even speakers. Hmm. Kind of wanna. First time I've seen Stalin in this game, actually, I think. I've seen Lennon quite a few times. In the flesh as well. Rubles and waste paper. I don't wanna steal anything, I don't know whether it'll come back to haunt me. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few people. And a maintenance engineer. Those see. That's no, that doesn't look like a secret area just yet. I really want to find those secret ways down. I mean, that could be it, really. In the storage room, like in the corner. Anywho, let's talk to the mechanic. A shabby, unshaved man in blue overalls tinkers with the pipe, tightens it up, and takes a few steps back to contemplate his work, rubbing his chin. As he notices you, he gives you a short nod. What are you doing? The man sighs and crosses his arms on his chest. Fixing the pipes, but these. He makes an imperceptible, threatening gesture in the direction of the doors in front of him. But these, I can't even find a decent word for them, my bosses. These guys do the best to hinder my work. I make too much noise, they say. The noise distraction from the work. Work my ass. Can I ask you a few questions? The man yawns in his fist and nods his agreement. <sighs> Why not? What do you want to ask? Have you heard what the local government's discussing? Don't tell anyone, but I've heard our leaders are preparing some dirty tricks to play on Paragon just to tickle them, they said. How? This much I don't know. And how's it feel here in the bunker? Better than on the surface? Hell no. It's cleaner and dry, sure. Grub's good. I have a roof over my head. Great roof. But I feel so much more freedom outside in the wasteland. So I don't know, really. I guess people are ripe when they say the grass is greener in the neighbor's garden. Yep, we have that saying, too. Any interest in rumours? I've heard the sea has dried out in the east, and the climate's gone mad. What happened to our planet? At this rate, we'll soon be extinct. Like those... What's her name? Dinosaurs. And who's the biggest boss in town? Who's behind all this? Our Secretary General, Gennady Nikolovich. Strictly between us, he's a champion jerk, even though he tries to hide it. He makes an impression of a lively fellow, but deeper inside you'll find his core is eaten through with worms. I might be wrong, mind, after all. We're not close pals, but that's the impression I have. Interesting. Don't think I can get too much more from him. Ooh, some water dispenser machines. I wonder whether these actually work or whether I can tinker with them. Maybe I can get them to dispense something else. Do almost must these be used up for? Nope, only jack the machine open. Do I grab a cup? If I'm allowed to? I'm not stealing, I'm just using it. Try to get a drink? Place the glass under the tap and push a random button. Nothing happens. Hit the machine with your fist. <laughs> because of maintenance. Brown substance. Eee. Yeah. No. Not again. Not after last time. I've still got food poisoning from that. Bathroom. Bathroom. That is a nice bathroom. With some good quarters. And a very armed guard. What's that? An AK. Yeah. I guess I can just walk in. Oh, that's going to be the Secretary General, isn't it? Is there anything else? No. Hello there. Just a bunch of heavily armed guards. Oh. Hmm. I don't think you'll allow me to break into that, will you? Uh. Uh. Looks at you in silence. Go ahead. Okay, don't mind if I do. I thought he was going to stop me. <laughs> A fit, strong man wearing perfume and dressed in classic, perfectly fitted pre-war suit is looking neat and polished. He's studying you carefully without saying a word. When he finally speaks, you're amazed by the strength and confidence of his voice. I have been notified of your presence here, comrade. It's high time we met and talk face to face. Let's leave the formalities behind us. I'm the Secretary General of the Chamber of Commerce, Gennady Nikolov. You, Igor, are a man of mystery, an indefinite occupation, but the future, in the future, a potential valuable ally to our city. What do you say? This is obscene, playing a leader to a tiny part of the great, gone but great union, and to call yourself by the title of true heroes, the titans of intellect, the modern Descartes and Newtons, such as Leonid Brezhnev and Nikita Khrushchev, and even, goddammit, Stalin himself. 
The Union also had to start somewhere, writer Trudov. By the way, could you be so kind and sign an edition of your novel, Comrade Trottle? A truly fascinating book. Oh, what a feeling you get when you thought that you've been talking to a vain narcissistic megalomaniac, the petty king of the nearest Colcots, but then you realise there's a true man of the Empire in front of you. The man with a capital M, a man of refined taste and unsurpassed beauty. Good lord, Hexagen. You've gone from, that was a pretty bad 180 degree. Ugh. From, you know, spitting venom at him to licking his boots. Jeez. I'm glad that we are friends now. So, Comrade Igor, how do you like my proposal? Hmm. I feel like whether or not we become allies will depend on my willingness to embark on some sort of mission. Shinadi Nikolaev smiles and nods. Yes. The times when people gain their status in exchange for promises and letters of recommendation are long gone. Right now, the only thing that matters are one's actions, and us, the state's loyal servants, have plenty of things to do. Take that disgusting circus that set up its tents in our land, for example. Drug dealers, kidnappers, thieves, drunks, degenerates. As Nikolov is saying these words, his nostrils flare and a sharp wrinkle cuts a beers on his forehead. Of course, they're not the biggest, or even the second biggest threat around here, but every great purge must start somewhere. I kindly ask you to dispose of that troop and their tasteless fans, and I mean physically destroy them so they can't just move a couple of kilometers and resume their activities. The remuneration for this job will amount to 3,000 rubles in cash. My trust and respect will come as an added bonus. Well, fuck you, Mr. Nikolaev. I kind of like those guys, as weird and confusing as they are. <laughs> like an enemy, an enemy of all things humorous and fun. <laughs> wow, take out the whole circus? Are they really that harmful to the city? Your words don't seem to have an effect on the Secretary General. However, you notice his fist clench. You will be surprised. There are no other way to deal with them. So we execute the kidnappers this week and the drug dealers next week? What will we gain? I'm asking you to alleviate our suffering and cure us from the circus parasites once and for all with one swift and clear blow. What could be more logical? Shit. I don't know if I accept this, I'll have to go through with it. I kind of want to accept this and then talk to the, uh, the people in the circus. Do I look like the enemy of all things humorous and fun? Why don't you send the guards if they're breaking the law? Personality. Well, I see that you're trustworthy enough to know the real reason. First of all, despite the best efforts of the officials from the Mass Cult Bureau, the ordinary citizen <laughs> Mass Cult Bureau, the ordinary citizens still appreciate idiotic entertainment that is the circus, and therefore won't be too happy to hear that their government was behind the destruction of their favorite form of entertainment. In addition, the genocide of circus performers organized by unknown fighters near Krasnosnamonia could become a curious military incident that later can be used as justification for future expansion. Can we go about this without committing genocide? I'm sure I can convince them to leave in peace. The Secretary General frowns. Well, in the worst case scenario, that could count as a satisfactory outcome, but I will continue to insist that I would strongly prefer total annihilation as a result of this operation. It's much cleaner and... Hmm, Better in many ways, so... Damn it. This guy's clearly an asshole. I don't want to cut him off right now, though. That's the only problem. Because I reckon that would affect my ability to come and go from the bunker as well as what other missions I could possibly take later on down the line. I don't really want to make them move. <sighs> I... I'll accept it for now and talk to the circus people, see what I can get. I don't really want to force them to move if they want to stay there, but... Fine, whatever. I agree. The General Secretary nods without saying a word and puts his palms together in the shape of a house. Great. I'm happy to hear that. I suggest you start the purge from the cockpit of the crash plane. That's where you'll find Madame Vouva. She runs the circus. If she isn't one of the first victims, I'm sure that she'll somehow manage to coordinate her people so they can escape or put up a furious, cohesive fight. That's a gift she possesses. Hmm, according to my agent's intel. All right. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Well, I keep it in mind. Let's talk about something else. Sure. May I ask you some more questions? Well, of course. How else? But after your curiosity is satisfied, let's get straight to business. You look much younger than your subordinates. How come? 
I got into politics ever since I was young, and believe me, I proved it myself in many complicated situations. There were even legends about me, like how during peace talks with the bandit lord Dimitri the Cosmopolitan, I secretly scattered lumps of cheese all over the guys in camping, only to later glue grenades onto some rats and send them back there come nightfall. What rat would agree to something like this? Still, I always held my ground in negotiations. What really happened was we destroyed that gang with... Uh... My treliuses? We found... Ah! Oh yeah. So, the little spider guys. We destroyed that gang with Mitralius's we found in the ruins of a Mitralius museum, but still, my track record is quite impressive and worthy of the high degree of trust of my high rank within the Chamber of Commerce. Mitralius? I might think of something else. I'm going to have to look at that real quick. Oh, volley guns. Okay, so that's not quite uh, groups of ants, especially in a museum. Sounds impressive. And um, what's the biggest asset of Krasnoy's pneumonia? Location, size, strong economy, military force, this is the answer you get if you'll ask one of our citizens. However, I would like to point out that in our city, the old USSR culture and ideology is still very much present and alive. People can feel this continuity, which they associate with carefree life, stability, and prosperity of the era long gone. And in this turn, and this in turn allows us to grow. Ah, oh, of course. The fact that you keep calling each other general secretaries and comrades signifi signifies some real continuity. Well, that's a very superficial judgement, comrade. However, the ability to see deeper into the true nature of things is not necessary for the soldiers. It disrupts the discipline. Okay. And what are the main threats across Nozomonia? The barbaric chaos at this paragon, the wild lands of the north, the drug trade, the slave trade, the mutants, the so-called atom, just to name a few. But we're holding up pretty good despite all that. But let's be frank, those aren't the biggest problems, but the fact that the whole police force is massively corrupt sure is, and... And you can pass this information on to the Internal Affairs Department, Comrade Fidel. I'm sure they will know just what to do. <laughs> I question the validity of that statement. One more question. What other rumours circulating in the city are of biggest concern to you? To be honest, right now I'm most concerned with the Black Lotus problem. The drug was considered to be an urban legend not long ago, but now we know that it destroys an adult after just two or three uses. It's in our best interest to stop that deadly poison from spreading. Two or three uses? Good lord. I should get going. Well, that was unfortunately enlightening. Um, comrade, do you mind if I quickly peruse your bookshelves? Magazines. I guess you won't allow me to peruse your desk. Nope. I want you to sit in front of it anyway. Are oh, you work and sleep in the same room? Damn it, I'm kind of looking for books or <laughs> magazines or something. Bottle of vodka. I wonder whether that's the secret entrance, seeing as it's right behind his quarters. Ah, there must be some way into it. That's strange. Maybe there's another floor. So, who are you? Oh, is it? Yeah, Ivan. Ivan Ivanovich is leafing through a bunch of undoubtedly important papers. As he notices you, he gives a friendly wave. Look who's here. Well, hello, Father of Democracy. What brings you to our bunker? Didn't you invite me to visit? That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> True that, we're almost colleagues now after all. So how are you doing? Uh, not bad, making my way up. Glad to hear it, but if I'm not mistaken, you're doing pretty well already. The elections in Otradno wouldn't have happened without your intervention. That's quite an achievement. I guess. Look, I keep wondering what you're doing in Paragon. Oh, okay, by the way, I haven't had any work from Dan recently. Hmm. Could you give me a job? I'll see what he's got to offer. The man slicks back his receding hair and moves close to you. Actually, I may have just the right job for you. You've already shown you're no stranger to politics, so this shouldn't surprise you. There's a place called the Mountain Pass of Woes where the Caravanserai is located. It's an important regional hub. Merchants like to stop there on their way through the mountains. I think we would all benefit if they admitted Krasnoy's pneumonia superiority. So you're saying it's up to me to convince them? Exactly. Of course they won't agree just like that. I'm not that naive. But uh, perhaps you'll be able to convince them to admit it de jour, if not de facto. Once that's done, we'll work from there. Sounds interesting. Who do I have to talk to? Comrade Mahmudov, the warden of Caravanserai. He's a sly one, but it won't be your first time dealing with this sort. I agree. Where do I have to go? For a start, Fogolevka. From there you can hitchhike to the mountain pass of woes. Do you know the way to Fogolevka? Here, I'll mark it for you. 
Ivan Ivanovich takes your map and puts a neat circle on it. At least it's neat, I guess. There. Well, Godspeed, as they say. Unless there's anything else I can help you with. I was wondering what you're doing in Paragon. The official shrugs and waves his hand nonchalantly. Political matters. Nothing interesting. Look, I don't ask you about your business and you don't ask me about mine, okay? How about just chatting? Would that interest you? Why not? Ask away. Haha, <laughs> personality. Never lets me down. Tell me about the local authorities. Well, Pyron Krasno's pneumonia in surrounding areas belongs to the Chamber of Commerce. Even Dan admits it. Pity that Paragon pushes back from time to time. Were they more compliant, there would be far less trouble all around. And what can you tell me about the city? Well, it's obviously bigger than our dear Otradno. The city authorities are strict, attentive to the last detail, and utterly demanding of each and every social unit. The streets are, for the most part, calm. People sleep at night and work during the day, just like it should be in a civilized society. And what do you know about the wasteland? Not any more than you do. Any insignificant details I might know are not worthy of your or anyone else's attention. And any rumours? There's a secret hidden... Deep in our bunker, I don't even know where to start. A colleague of mine, a person of keen intelligence, has taken it in a pet pig. We're trying our best to keep it a secret. I don't want people to mistake the Chamber of Commerce for a mental asylum. A pet? How charming. Where is the pig, actually? Oh. I don't want to kill the pig. <laughs> don't wanna. Doesn't seem to be another. There's a few people there than I expected, to be fair. Unless I can pick which floor I go into when I get into the elevator. Well, come on, those secret doors have got to go somewhere in here. They were like right under where the where the chamber was. Strange. That that's too far down, really. That one look like one, and it doesn't really look like there's anything in here that could be a secret room, which is strange. Those are definitely hinges on those doors. With like little secret areas behind them. I wonder whether I just... It's probably something to do with the, uh, you know, the quest I've got for the bandits and the town. Let's talk to you first. 